Well, hello, Tennis fans. We're back another Wednesday, another podcast. And thank you so much for joining. Today, we have a very special music therapist, uh, Dr. James Keller. And I'll be telling you a bit about him in a second. But uh, first of all, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Sweet. So, yeah, Dr. Jim Hiller, he's a professor of music therapy at the University of Dayton, um, which is also really close for us, Sam Fent, because we also support some programs there at Dayton. And um, Dr. Hiller, his clinical experience includes extensive work in child, adolescent, adult, geriatrics, psychiatry, brain trauma, developmental disabilities, oncology, you name it. It's, it's all over the place, which is awesome. And I also got from your biography that uh, you tend to be more active music therapy methods, and his uh, area of it is with clinical improvisation these models of music therapy. Um, and Dr. Hill, you also continue to perform as a singer, guitarist, right? Yeah, I still play quite a bit, yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, that's just a bit of an introduction. Um, I'm really excited to have you here. There is so much we can talk. Uh, I've seen, you know, you have many, many publications. And if anybody has questions, you can definitely ask. But particularly for today, I, I was interested in focusing on a paper that you wrote about choosing music experiences in music therapy. Um, now, when, when exactly did you write that? I'm sorry? When did you write this paper on? Um, the paper was published um, about this time last year. Okay, okay, so it's pretty uh, recent. Yes, that's awesome. Um, and actually, before that, I was curious about a couple of things. Uh, first of all, why did you become a music therapist? Why? So I was, um, I was performing. That's uh, all I did five, six nights a week in smoky bars and so on. And uh, I met a music therapist and observed her working in a, a large uh, state-run psychiatric facility. And I was uh, just thrilled with the way uh, the individuals she was working with uh, responded to, to music engagement, um, even in their quite limited capacity um, in, their, in their mental health problems. Um, but it was just uh, life changing for me to see how that, uh, how music moved these people in a very healthy way that I didn't see outside of the music context. Um, and it just, I had to find out what was going on. Uh, and so I pursued graduate work from there. Awesome. Yeah. So you started music from graduate level. Yes. Yeah. I was about 30 years old when I came into the profession. Okay. Yeah. And early on, um, what were your interests? Do you have a certain population you wanted to work with? Um, mostly I was interested in work with adults um, in psychiatric mental health settings. Um, okay. Right. And I, and I do like to work in an in active ways where clients are involved in the music making process, um, improvisation in particular. Definitely, that's awesome. And you still continue to do clinical work? Um, actually, most of my work, all of it now is in supervision with students who are in different um, field placements throughout the community. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, so yeah. I think now we can jump into this paper. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that, but I'm personally studying music therapy, uh, pursuing a master's degree. All right, so, where? In, uh, it's called SRH. It's in Heidelberg, Germany. 
Ah, okay. With uh, uh, Doug Keith? Yes, that's him. Excellent. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love hello. how, okay, I will. I love how um, all the music artists know each other. We are a, uh, a small community, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I was reading your paper, you know, preparing for this interview and also because of, I just found it really interesting. And I did have a few questions. I think just in general, it would be nice for anybody watching to kind of give them an overview of what we mean of, about this idea of selecting music experiences in music therapy. Okay. So, um, so, so music can be experienced in a variety of ways. Um, and this is, the article also mentions uh, four music therapy methods. Um, so this is uh, the crux of any music therapist's work um, is that we engage clients in uh, music experiences. Um, and the possibilities are endless, uh, but they but anytime you engage a client musically, you're you're engaging them through one of the four methods. And those methods are recreating or reproducing music that already exists, uh, that the client already has an understanding of, improvising, uh, so that's spontaneous and extemporaneous music making. Um, composing uh, in any any way, engaging the client in the composition process, and uh, receptive or listening experiences, which this is a huge category of ways of engaging. So I can listen to music and move. I can listen to music and have images. I can listen to music and change my physiology, my heart rate, my breathing. I can listen to music and have uh, images uh, and follow those images in my mind. And um, those are very useful from a psychodynamic standpoint. Um, so, right. And so we select if underneath all these categories, um, there are many, many, many variations of these different methods how we might engage clients. And so part of our task as therapists is first understanding what a client's needs are and what sorts of challenges and resources or strengths that they bring to the therapy process. And then determining the, the type of music therapy experience, in other words, a method or a variation of one of the methods to, to engage them. Uh, in the process. So that's the right. idea of selecting. Um, and selecting, um, the article is all about um, a variety of considerations that are important for us to think through before we actually start making music with a client. Definitely. And I think that's also really important for people who might not know m much about music therapy. Uh, so some, some of our supporters some of the people who know about Sam's fans, they come and they might at first think that music therapy is somebody just coming to play songs for a patient. Mm -hmm. That it might have its place, and we're not saying that bad, but a music therapist has this knowledge of a variety of experiences and knows which experience can help the patient to achieve a goal or to um, I know that you also talk in your paper about what is the center of this selection process. Um, but I think that that's the difference in music therapy and that's a really important thing for people to understand. Right. We, we come at it from a very thoughtful and, and uh, yeah, a very thoughtful approach that's yeah. steeped in first, and foremost, I think our own experiences with music in in different ways, improvising and recreating and so on, but also what the literature tells us um, in terms of its different methods, usefulness and effectiveness. Yeah, definitely. 
And so one of the first things that you expand upon on your paper is this idea of ways of thinking. Right. Um, so can you explain a bit I think this was even a You're frozen, bit new but I'm guessing me. that you're asking. Yeah, am I back? I, um, anybody watching, I hope it's not frozen. Okay. But as we kind of retake this, um, I was about to ask about some ways of thinking on selecting music experiences. And Sam's fans, we apologize as we figure out here what's happening. Sometimes with technology, things get a bit complicated. Okay, so I hope you can also hear me. And uh, we might have lost Dr. James Hiller for a little bit. I hope he will rejoin us. But I would just at least like to expand upon what we were talking about. So um, we were talking about these ways of thinking in selecting music experiences, which Dr. Hiller talks about in his paper. And basically, he says that a therapist can, uh, when he comes into a session, he can have a different thing in his mind or her, her mind. So for example, one of those is to be goal oriented. So if a music therapist is thinking with a goal orientation, they might think about what's the outcome that they want out of the session. And so they might choose whatever they uh, whatever methods are needed in order to achieve that goal or that outcome. Uh, then also, a music therapist might be experience-oriented. So if they're experience-oriented, they, um, the outcome is not predetermined, and instead, the therapist is emerging him or herself into the session, into the experience of the session. And so there, there is an, the session evolves with the therapist and the client, which eventually will lead into different outcomes, but that's not the goal from the onset. Then another way of thinking is context orientation. That's uh, appropriate when the client, for example, his or her health have been really impacted by a certain way. So 
in this way, the primary focus is on empowering the client to be more active in shaping the world in which they live. So the um, therapist is sort of, um, it's partnering or it's cooperating with the clients and in order to help in that situation that they might be in. And there is also sort of an integral practice perspective, which is to, to see clients and their needs from different perspectives to understand that uh, some clients might benefit from an outcome orientation or they might benefit from an experience orientation and and so on so it's really being integral and holistic in what we're doing and understanding that not all patients need the same all the time so selecting the music experiences might be different at one point or another. So I think that's important. And unfortunately, Dr. James Seller hasn't been able to join us yet. And um, I hope he can. But I just want to say also that if you want to read his paper, that's really insightful. He also talks later about the general considerations in selecting music experiences. So. He, I, I should also give credit to Susan, Dr. Susan Gardstrom, who also collaborated on writing this paper. And they write about these considerations that involve ethics, involves risks, contraindications, prerequisites for engagement, session parameters, and um, the culture of the client product versus process focused, client, client readiness, client preferences, and therapist support and directiveness. So it really is a lot of, a lot of considerations that go into selecting music experiences. And that's important to consider too. Uh, if you're new to music therapy or you're not an expert or anything, you it's important to realize that a music therapist coming into a session, for example, coming to see a child in, at Nationwide Children's Hospital or at any children's hospital, that they're, they're really keeping all these things in mind. So they have this training to know what kind of experience the client needs. Um, and based on that, they're able to bring what's best ultimately for the client you know it's really client focused so anyways it's a really interesting topic and i'm really sad that dr we, we lost dr hiller uh and sorry about the technical difficulties i hope that you were able to take something out of this broadcast and um yeah, if you have any questions, I can definitely direct you to Dr. Hiller and I can also make, send you the link or make this um, paper accessible to you so if you want to learn a little bit more about how music therapists make selections on musical experiences. And yeah, I um, just tune in next Wednesday. We'll work on the technical issues and Thank you for your patience. Sorry that we lost Dr. Hiller, uh, but we hope that you still got something out of this. And yeah, thank you, Sam's fans, for everything that you do and for your support on social media and on all our campaigns or events and everything. So we hope to see you soon. Hope to see you again here on Facebook Live. And yeah, till then, cheers and